This is how to bridge Ethereum amongst any of the Ethereum chains. So Ethereum mainnet, base, Arbitrum, Optimism, many other EVM chains. If you've got your assets on these chains, you can bridge amongst all of them. There are three ways to do this. I'll show you those in this video timestamped down below. They have a different cost and time between the bridges. So make sure to choose the one that suits you. The first option is to use the official or native bridge of the network that you want to bridge to. So if you have assets on the Ethereum mainnet and you want to bridge them over to the layer two or back, then you can use the native bridge. This is going to be the most trustworthy and definitive, although it may cost you a bit of money if you're interacting with the Ethereum mainnet. So an example of this is the base bridge, right? You also have Arbitrum bridge. Again, I'll link all of these below. So I'll show you an example of this. So we're going to use the base bridge right here. Now, actually, BaseBridge is moving from this website over to what they call SuperBridge. This is just simply the new interface, right? So what we can do is bridge from Ethereum mainnet to any of these layer twos and back again. So we're going to press deposit. And as you can see, if you click up here, these are the bridges supported on SuperBridge. It's essentially optimism ecosystem uh, networks that can use this. So Base, OP mainnet, a couple of others. So for any bridge, what we're going to do is choose the network that we want to bridge to and from, and then we're going to connect our wallet. Connect. I'm just going to connect my wallet right here. It says, do you want to connect? So we're going to click yes. And then we're connected and it shows my wallet and the amount of ETH I have on any specific network. So we're going to deposit. That means deposit to the layer two, right? So you can see the logo up here is base. We're from and then to, because this is an official bridge. So what we're doing is simply going from ETH mainnet to the layer two and back again. Let's change over to Optimism OP. You can see it's to and from Ethereum to OP mainnet, right? So depositing to the layer two, if you want to get it back, you just press withdraw and it goes the other way. So deposit, of course, you need some ETH on the mainnet if you do have that. So you can put an amount in and then it goes to your same address. So you're going from ETH mainnet over to the second layer, whether that's base, Arbitrum, Optimism, whatever it is. For this bridge, you can see these networks right here. So you can click whichever one that you want to bridge to. Down here, this is the network. So you're sending it from your ETH mainnet over to the layer two. Receive on base. You can see that here. So we're receiving one ETH. Transfer time is three minutes. And you can see the network fees here are $2.44. So not a big deal right now. So what we can do is if you have sufficient funds, just press bridge and you just pay the bridge fee in your wallet. It's as simple as that. It goes over to base. That takes three minutes and it's a transaction on the Ethereum mainnet if you're sending from ETH mainnet over to the layer two. Now, if you press withdraw, of course, that takes it from the layer two back to Ethereum. Now, because we're using base right here as an example, it's using um, the optimism stack. These are optimistic rollups. That means essentially that if you want to take assets from the layer two back to the Ethereum mainnet, it's going to take seven days. It takes seven days to clear and settle to make sure that that transaction actually goes through. So if you're bridging back, it's going to take a lot of time. You can see the network fee is very low because you're sending the assets from the layer two back to Ethereum. So that's going to take seven days. Press that again. And your wallet is simply just going to pay the fee there with ETH as well. So every time you pay these fees, you need to pay some ETH for gas on all of these networks. ETH is the gas. So you either deposit or withdraw, connect your wallet, and then just pay the fee to actually bridge the assets over. Using the official native bridges is the trustworthy way to do things. However, you can see there's some limited functionality. You can only bridge in and out of mainnet, and it may take some time and cost. So there are bridge applications that also let us do this. And these can be cheaper and faster. You can also bridge directly between layer twos as well without touching the main net. However, these are applications and so they are more centralized. And essentially what you're doing is sending your assets into them and they're just kind of competing to take the order and then send you the assets on the other chain. So I'll show you how these work. I'll also leave this link down below, which is the DeFi Llama page, which shows you all of the popular bridges that we can go ahead and use. So I'll just show you an example of one here. This is a cross bridge. So I've connected my wallet in the top right hand corner. So from here, we can choose the asset that we want to send and then the network from and the network to that we're receiving. So we can choose any asset actually on a bridge. What you can actually do is send on some uh, bridges ETH on one chain and receive it as a stable coin in another. So what you'll actually do is send an amount of value in 
and they'll exchange it for you and then send it to you on the other chain. However, there may be swap fees and other fees there. So just be sure about the costs of all of this. So for me, I'm going to send some ETH that I've chosen here from Optimism, but you can choose any network. And then from here, I'm going to receive it on the base network and I'm going to choose an amount to send. Now from here, it's going to tell me exactly what my costs are. So the transaction breakdown is my bridging fee and the destination gas fee, which adds up to four cents. And it's going to take two minutes to do that. So if you reverse this as well, you can see it takes another, what, eight seconds. And even if we choose ETH mainnet, it's actually going to be a lot quicker. So this is 32 seconds. And then if we go back, that would be, what, 12 seconds. So you can see the differences there between the native bridges and, you know, the app bridge applications that are doing things in a different way. So what I'm going to do is send from Optimism to the base network, and it's going to uh, show me all of my fees here. So if I want to confirm this transaction, we can do that. And you have the amount that you're sending. And then your wallet, whether you're using MetaMask or Rabi or anything else, it's going to you know, give you the gas fee and tell you what's going to happen. So Rabi is telling me that I'm sending around 2872. Uh, that's the dollar amount. And I'm going to be receiving 2872. So pretty much, you know, a very, very low cost transfer. If you want to actually go ahead and bridge that, just press sign and create in your wallet. And then that's going to send that transaction for you and actually bridge the assets between the different networks. Different bridge applications may have more or less support for assets and layer twos. So choose the one that best suits your needs. However, if you have your assets on a centralized exchange, just withdraw them over the network that you want to use. You can use the centralized exchange as a bridge as well if the network that you want to use is supported. So if you have some ETH on mainnet, send it into the centralized exchange and then withdraw it over the network that you want to use. So on my Binance, I have ETH and I'm going to withdraw it over Base, Arbitrum, Optimism, BNB chain. This may be more reliable for you and easier to use. So you don't have to use a bridge. You can just withdraw it directly over the chain that you want to use. Your Ethereum address is the same across all of these different networks. So if the exchange you're using supports direct withdrawals over the layer two, you don't have to use a bridge. You just withdraw it over. So that can be an easier and cheaper way to do things. I'll leave links below to the exchanges I use if you want to get some deposit bonuses on them as well. Links to MetaMask and Rabi tutorials if you don't use wallets as well, linked down in the description. I'm James, this is Manzi G. Cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.